Hello and welcome to this Unity tutorial where I'm going to show you how to make a, what do you call it, like a reticle or a, a cursor at the middle of the screen. So um, what we've got here is, I suppose this will be in a, I'll, I'll put this in our Unity simple voxel world Minecraft series. So what we've got here is a simple voxel world and I've got some trees and things like that. If you're interested in how to make this kind of terrain, uh, make the trees, also how to delete blocks or remove blocks like this. I'm saying blocks, I mean voxels. I guess they kind of are uh, blocks as well. Um, you can go and look at the other tutorials. So this tutorial will just look at making a reticle appear on the screen because at the moment I can add blocks or voxels when I get close enough and I can remove them, but it's a little hard to kind of like aim, see where I'm pointing to, to be able to, to place those or delete them accurately. So it'd be nice to know where we're looking. So what we want is like a little dot at the center of the screen and this should be very, very easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do it now. Right, there are different ways we could do it. One way is you could put a literal object in the scene ahead of you and then make it a child of your player. I've got, I don't know if you can see this, down here in my scene, I've got a first person controller. So let's just show you what I was talking about. You could create, um, let's say a, a, a sphere would look kind of cool. And I've created it um, exactly where my first person controller is. Um, notice that I had selected my first person controller, then created the object. And Unity is quite clever, it thinks, well, if I'm looking at something, I've created an object, maybe I want to align that object that I've just created with the thing that you're looking at. So it does that, which is kind of handy. But then let's move, let's make sure I'm, I focus on a sphere. Let's call that um, cursor, something like that. And then I'll move that forwards on the z-axis, so it should be ahead of us. And then, to make something a child object of another um, game object, you select it in the inspector and drag it onto the other object. So now we can see, if I close up the me, the first person controller, if we open that up, we can see that our cursor has been added. Now, what that means, this relationship, it means that wherever this me will be pointed or looking, uh, the cursor will follow. There might be a little bug here, actually. Let's just have a look. We might get some unusual movement. So we've got a, a kind of cursor ahead of us. Now, when I turn around, this looks kind of funny. It's like I've created like an object or a third person control, <laughs> right? Um, when I look around me, it's fine. It's kind of working. But if I look up and down, you can see it's not really attached to the camera. So we've attached it to the wrong um, game object, or we've, um, what was I gonna say? I've forgotten what I was gonna say. We've done, we, or we've done something else. Let's attach it to the first person character. We can see that this has actually got a camera on, which is the game object that's moving around with the mouse. So all we have to do is parent it here. There we go, slight adjustment. Also, I think we now need to move this a little bit forward. And let's make the scale 10% um, smaller. There we go. Okay, that's much better now. Um, it's not in the center of our screen, so we need to adjust it a bit. But there you go. Uh, that's one way you could create um, a cursor. And you can see the light is kind of reacting with your, your with this makeshift cursor and it's okay. Um, what you might want to do, I'm just gonna lift him up slightly. Um, let's focus in on him. Oh yeah, you can see the, my, the, the Y component was off slightly. I put it, I set it to zero now. Will that be in the center of the screen? Feels a little high. No, that's in the center of the screen. Okay, so we've got it. It's um, position components now at zero. So zero, zero, zero. Oh, except for Z, which we've adjusted forward. But what you can do, because it's a real 3D object, 
Um, you can turn off its collision if you want to, or you could have it on if you suddenly wanted it to go um, solid for some reason. Um, you can obviously change its colour and things like that fairly easily. And it's quite nice that it reacts with the light. It kind of, um, I don't know, feels more solid and things like that. So that's one way you could do it. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend doing it this way uh, because being a 3D object, it's not going to be that efficient and um, and it's going to be quite complicated. It's got a mesh renderer, it's got a sphere collider, which we could switch off here, a, sp a sphere mesh filter, of course it's got its transform, so it's, got a, it's quite busy, it's got a lot going on and it's not really designed to be like a, a, an overlay, it's a 3D object in the scene. So I'm going to disable this object, which I'll probably forget about. Um, and let's do it in a different way now. So what we really want to do is have like a 2D element over our screen that's not really interacting with the 3D environment. So to do that, we're going to go down to game object and we want a UI um, object, which stands for user interface. And let's go to canvas first, a canvas if I now just switch this into 2D view up here, canvas is an area, I've lost it, there we go, an area that just automatically spreads across the screen. You can kind of change its orientation, but by default, this should be slap bang over our screen. And what you can do, you can place like sprites onto it. So that just means like 2D flat, um, images that are not going to interact with your screen. You can also add buttons, drop down menus, um, loads of things like that. So if you were trying to maybe display the frames per second or health or perhaps an inventory or something, which we might do in a future video in this Minecraft series, um, you would do it upon a UI canvas. So uh, we can now see the canvas in the inspector. I'm going to right click on it and I want to add a little image um, which gives us something immediately. Let's just run the, the scene and see what that gives us. So that gives you a flat square in the middle of the screen that doesn't have the overhead that an actual game object would have. So I don't have to worry about it colliding with things. Um, I, I don't even have to reposition it. Unity is already you know, positioned it in the middle of the screen for me and all and that kind of thing. Right. I definitely want it smaller though, and we want it perhaps see-through. So I made I've made sure that I've clicked on image. I'm gonna change its name so I know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna call it a uh, crosshair. And then you can see when I've selected it on its um rectangle transform component we could change that to maybe 20 by 20 instead of 100 by 100. The anchors um, mean where it's going to be kind of fixed in, in this area. So I don't want to play around with that. That's just um, a bit of information just in case you were wondering. Um, and the image itself, which is a script, which is handy, let's say we had a ray caster or a physics ray caster, which we do have actually on the Diggly script. If you know from my other um, tutorials on this, the Diggly strip, uh, script controls placing blocks and removing them. Um, so perhaps if it detected by ray that you were in range of a block, you could change um, the color of our little crosshair and that would tell the user that they are, say it goes green, that means they could place a block down um, when ordinary it's blue or something like that. So I won't go into that in this script. If you want me to show you how to do a script like that where you change the color of the cursor, let me know and I'll do it. Um, so we don't want it to be a raycast target at the moment, um, but we do want to change its color. The first thing we could do is change its alpha value. These um, sliders control how much red um, is in the color of our object, how much green, how much blue, and then alpha means how see-through it is. So we could make it semi-transparent, it's about halfway there. I also want it to kind of go blue like that. I think it looks kind of futuristic. Okay, there we go. 
Um, just while I'm here, in the source image, you could draw your own um, like sprite or crosshair, and this is where you would add it in. Um, so you could have any design of sprite that you wanted, any design of crosshair that you wanted. Um, let's just take a look at this. So we want it to be a bit smaller, and we want to be able to see through it now. Yes, and we can see we can see through it, and it's a lot smaller. So now where I'm pointing, I can get my block, and it's amazing how much how how easier it is, how much easier it is. There we go. So um, there we go. So it's made my life building things a lot easier here, or or digging down right. Um, I noticed a bug, by the way, if you've been using my code. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of a happy bug. Um, the Diggly script works by kind of cloning the thing you're looking at. And I made it before I made these trees. So if we look at a tree, we can, and we're close enough, yep. <laughs> we can kind of actually add to the, uh, add to the tree object itself. There we go, which is kind of cool. I'm definitely going to leave that um, bug in there. That's a happy bug. There we go. You can kind of make a treehouse kind of thing. Lovely. <laughs> there you go. So that's how to make uh, reticles or crosshairs, things in the middle of the screen to help you point at stuff. There you go. Uh, leave any comments if uh, you want me to do anything else uh, with this script. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely weekend.